Right. Good morning, everyone. And good morning to uh, students online as well. All right. Let's just begin with a word of prayer and we'll get into our teaching today. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much once again for this beautiful day that you've given us. And even as we've come together to learn, pray God that you will, God, continue to speak to us, Lord. We open our hearts, we open our minds, give us the wisdom. Uh, help us to understand everything that we learn. We study, God, throughout this day. We commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so last class we stopped at chapter 37. right? Uh, so we did quite a few. I think we started with chapter 33 last class. We looked at how Jesus Christ became our sanctification. And what is sanctification? Sorry? Holy, very good. Set apart, yes, very good, good. Okay, so we are set apart, we are sanctified, and we are saints in Christ. We looked at that as well, right? So when, as we become believers, the moment we become believers, we are saints, right? It's not like we have to attain certain level of knowledge or know so many things from the Bible, only thing, only then we are saints. No. Paul is writing to the church in Galatians and Corinth. He says, you are the saints of God. Right? And then we also did chapter 36. Uh, and now we begin with ch chapter 37, if I'm not wrong. Right? Uh, 37? Okay. So 30, chapter 37, believers are a holy temple in the Lord, right? Ephesians chapter 2, 21 and 22. Now, before we go there, what when we look at this word whole temple, right? Always remember that, you know, Paul is a Jew. The apostle Paul is a Jew, right? So he's talking about, he's not talking about the context of the temples that we see around here, right? In the Old Testament, the place of worship was called the temple of God. A temple is a place of worship. Now, Ephesians 2, 21 and 22. In him, or in whom, the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built up for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Now, as you and I are sanctified, we are made holy, we are set apart, Right? It is not only our personal, individual calling that matters. Now, all of us have some kind of calling, right? You're learning and fulfilling God's purpose that our gifts and our callings go together. Some of us are called to be pastor, some are called to be prophet, apostle, worship leader, administrator, right? So, different gifts, teacher, uh, some are called to be in the corporate place, whatever your calling is. That is your personal calling, what you are going to do for God. Right? But here, Paul is not talking about an individual aspect only. He's talking about collective. So basically, if you look at it, all of us here now, those online as well, all of us are collectively built up in the temple of God. Right? Meaning we are, we are the temple of God, all of us together. right? Uh, and this body... It's called the church. Now we must change the concept. You know, we are so used to saying, hey, Sunday church. That's true, right? There's Sunday church service. Uh, but you and I, even right now, we are the church. Yes? Right? It's not like you're students, I'm teacher. That is in the natural. But in the spiritual, we are the church. Right now. All of us, you, me, we all are the church, the body of Christ, right? A temple is a dwelling place of God, and it is a holy temple. The church community is a holy temple, a sacred dwelling place for God by His Spirit. So, now, right now, you know, all of us are here, we are the church, right? And we may ask this question, where is God? Saying, uh, you know, God is God is there, you know, where two or three are gathered. You know, His presence is there. Where's God? 
So that's why this verse, this this sentence here says, by the Holy Spirit. So we can be in worship in the church or here, even here in the Bible college or anywhere, life groups, cell groups, women's meeting, men's meeting, any group. The Holy Spirit can speak to us, each one of us, in different ways. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is dwelling in the body of Christ. It's a temple. It's, we are the temple of God. Yes, the Holy Spirit is in us. But also collectively, the Holy Spirit is among us. Right? So when we meet in the supernatural hour, what happens? We are all together praising God. We are worshipping God. God's presence is there. And the Holy Spirit begins to manifest. Now, even now, right? we are sitting, we are listening to a class. The Holy Spirit can speak to you one word which you will never forget. Or he can speak to you through a dream. Don't dream now. But he can speak to you. right? You may get a picture. You may get a thought. Right? It's the Holy Spirit speaking. Right? Or you may, you know, some question in our mind, all of a sudden, oh, this is the answer. Now I understand what this is. Right? How, how is that? Because of the Holy Spirit. It's not always, remember this, we are learning in lifestyle evangelism as well. It's not always that we have to see. What did Jesus say? You believe, you believe because you saw. Blessed are those who believe even when they don't see. The problem with this world is everyone wants to see and then believe. What did Thomas say? Till I see Jesus. And I touch the side, his nail pierced hands, till I touch his side, I will not believe. Right? The problem right now is people want to see. Where is your Jesus? That's the first question they'll ask. But here, as a church, we are dwelling, dwelling among the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit is here. Where's the Holy Spirit now? He's inside us. But now, right now, where is he? He's among us. He's there. His presence is there. He can speak to us right now. He will speak to us also. But right? even as you may be just sitting and listening. But what is happening? It's a deposit that's happening into your spirit. Right? And then suddenly, after one year, hey, I didn't know so much. I learned so much. How is that? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will remind you. Right? So as God dwells in us, he also dwells among us in the spirit. That's why we are called the temple of the holy God. Right? So God dwells by his spirit and is not confined to a location. That means it's not like the holy spirit is here. Then what about people praying in America? What about them? The holy spirit is everywhere. He's not confined to a location. It's not like Holy Spirit is in APC Bible College, so now he's going to be here only for some time. Other places will have to wait. No. What is, the Bible teaches us one of the attributes of God is he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. Right? So wherever God's people are, the temple of God is there, and God dwells there. Wherever. It could be five people in a village church. It could be 10,000 people in a church and city, in the city. And wherever people are, it is called God's temple. And where God's temple is, God's spirit is there. Right? First Corinthians, sorry, the individual believer is called a holy temple. The local church is also called a holy temple. And the body of Christ, which means across the entire world, all the believers are called a holy temple. Right? 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? Now, it's interesting that Paul is writing to the Corinthians. 
Right? Remember, we spoke about the Corinthians, right? They are people who are Gentiles, sexually immoral lives. They were prostitutes, right? They were in adultery, living in adultery, idolatry. They were living in sin. Now they've become believers. But what's happening is some of them are going back to their old habits. So Paul is reminding them and saying, hey, you cannot go back to your old habits. Why? Because you are the temple of God. Now the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside you. So your, your, your body no longer belongs to you. Your body belongs to God. Although you have all the rights to your body, but what does Paul say? I'm crucified with Christ. I don't live. Christ lives in me. So Paul is writing to the Corinthians and he's saying, do you not know you're the temple of God now? You're not the temple of any other idol or any other spirit, but you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So he's reminding them, right? So just so just just that we are temple, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit should remind us and we must be very careful on how we treat our body. Yes? Right? Everything in our body belongs to God. So for example, even is the mind, is, is this belonging to us, the mind? Yes? This is part of our body, right? Our mind, our thinking, our imagination is part of our soul. So if I'm thinking something wrong, right? I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just sitting in one place, in my house. But if I'm thinking something that is not right, what am I doing? I'm defiling the temple of God. What does Jesus say? It is not what comes out of your mouth that makes you defiled, but what goes, what you see, what you think, that is what can make us defiled. So what is the first thing I should say? I should say, Holy Spirit, you are inside me. I am the temple of God. So I cannot allow these thoughts to take control of me, to overcome me. I rebuke these thoughts in the name of Jesus. Now, doesn't mean devil is going to get scared and not come back. He will come back. He will come back stronger. But that conviction should be that, hey, I am the temple of God. Right? So this is just I'm talking about the mind. What about what I see? What about what I do? All of this, must we must be very careful. We must learn to live holy lives. Right? Now, I'm not saying that we will never sin. Sometimes we will sin. It's, there is, it is there. But we have been learning that as believers, we can overcome every sin. There is no sin we cannot overcome. Right? Later, we'll talk about the different stages of temptation. Right? Uh, it's there later on. We'll talk about that and how you and I as believers can overcome these temptations. Right? So you are the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. We must learn to keep it clean. If it becomes dirty, go back to the blood of Jesus. Ask for cleansing. Ask that God cleanses us, clean us. Continue to walk in holiness. Right? Okay, let's go to chapter 38. Okay, I'm just going to keep going. But if you have questions, those who are online as well, just raise your hands. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to stop me at any moment. Right? Okay. Being sanctified and being been sanctified and being sanctified in Christ. Now, here's something very interesting. It is an ongoing process. When you and I become believers, right? What happens? We are sanctified, we are made holy, we are set apart. But then is it the end over there? No. Because Christ is continuing to sanctify us day after day after day. So it is an ongoing process. It is not a one-time process. When we pray, accept Jesus into our life, that's a one-time. Say, Jesus, thank you for coming in. We become a believer. But the sanctification is a process that happens every day. Very simple. Look at it in the natural. 
we cannot say hey i had bath two days back so i don't have bath today i'll have bath next week or every year once i will have a bath <laughs> in the natural we don't do that and we have a bath every day right okay wake up get ready freshen ourselves have bath why because it's a natural cleansing that we do same way that is a spiritual cleansing that happens every time we don't say hey when i was born i was water baptized after water baptism i don't need any more bath it's wrong right doesn't make sense so just like in the natural same thing in the spiritual day after day there's a cleansing that happens and who will be cleansing us the holy spirit but what must we do work with the holy spirit to be cleansed right let's look at a few verses hebrews chapter 10 was 9 10 14 and 29 i'll read that then he said behold i have come to you do your will o god he takes away the first that he may establish the second by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of jesus christ once for all for by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified verse 29 of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the son of god underfoot counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace basically here these verses hebrews is sorry uh, the the writer uh, is reminding the believers about the blood of jesus he has come to cleanse us once for all but worse than by that we will be we we have been sanctified through the offering of the blood of jesus christ once for all for by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified you see that one offering he sanctified all of us once for all verse 14 in that one offering he is also perfecting those who are being sanctified. So you and I are being sanctified. Do we fail? Do we go through challenges? Do we go through uh, temptations, difficulties? Do we fall into temptations? All of this is there. But we are being sanctified day after day. Right? Colossians 1.22 in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight now why is god sanctifying us why is god cleansing us why do we have to wake up and pray every day and ask god to you know change our lives why should we do that see for example i i did a prayer five years back Right? I said, Lord Jesus, from now, my life is yours. I want to change my life. Come and live inside me. And I change all my bad habits. I become a good boy. Right? No bad friends, no bad habits. Jesus is living inside me. Holy Spirit is inside me. Jesus is happy. I am happy. Is that the end of the story? No. Because that's not what God wants. What God wants us is to continue to be holy, continue to be blameless, continue to be pure, above reproach, yes, without any fault. It's like saying, God, if I get 35 marks, it's enough. Pass. And God is saying, hey, I'll give you 90. 95 I'll give you out of 100. Imagine you go to your teacher and say, see, ma'am or, or sir, I got 95. Can you make it 35? 35 is it? I'm happy with 35. Well, ma'am say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you have done well. You got 95. That's your mark. Take it and go. Right? So Jesus has done everything and he has paid the price. Yes, we become believers. But he's saying, hey, you can become just like me. Now, what if I don't pray? What if I don't spend time reading the word? Nothing will happen. The only thing is, I'm not becoming like Jesus. I'll be in the same level. 
And eventually, if I don't pray, if I don't read God's word, what will happen? Temptations will come. The devil will easily trample over us and we will fail. So that is why this being sanctified is a process. We are a work in progress. Never can we say, OK, I've finished it all. I've done. Never can we say that. When you're 60 years old, don't say, OK, I have done the ministry. <laughs> Even if you've done, still continue. Continue, continue, keep continuing. Till the end of our life, it's a sanctification process. right? The scripture say, states that we've been sanctified. And it also states, Hebrews 10, 14, that we are being sanctified day after day. We have been perfected forever, yet we are being sanctified. It's like an oxymoron, meaning uh, we are saved, we are also being saved. We are sanctified, we are also being sanctified. We are righteous, we are also being righteous. We are justified, we are also being justified. Right? It's a process. It doesn't end. It's not like one time thing. No. Right? So this is also true because sanctification is a completed work in the spirit and is a continuous work in the natural, in our daily lives. Right? The work is completed in the spirit, but in the natural, we have to work to become more holy. We have to spend time in God's presence. That we have to do. So for example, we all are sanctified right now. What happens if I don't spend time in worship and prayer and reading of the word? Will we be sanctified? Yes, we are still sanctified. In, in the spiritual, we are sanctified. But in the natural, we are at the same level. Right? Imagine this. You're, all of us are in first year. Imagine this. You finish your first year, finish your first semester, you come for second semester. Second semester will teach you the same subjects. How will you feel? Say, hey, teach some new subjects. Right? Then you go to second years. What if we teach you the same subjects we taught you in first year? Say, hey, you know, we want to learn something new. We want to learn something bigger, get better, right? I mean, it's something to grow more, to become more spiritually strong. So remember that in the spirit, the work is done. In the natural, we have to do. We have to spend time in God's presence, right? As we live out who God has made us, and what he has done for us, the holiness of God begins to pervade our soul and our body. I think next semester we'll have a subject on holiness. When we begin to let the holiness of God affect our thoughts, our minds, our imagination, our dreams, our affections, our appetites, everything, the outcome will be holiness. What did Jesus say? God also said, God said that, no, be holy for I am holy. The most, sometimes we look at the Holy Spirit. When we say the Holy Spirit, what is the first thing that comes to our mind? Holiness? Wow. <laughs> for me, the first thing that comes to my mind when I say Holy Spirit is power. Or sometimes it is gifts. Right? But as Akil said, it is holiness. Holiness is much greater than the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can have all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and not be holy. Example, church in Corinth. They were flowing in all the gifts, but their thoughts, their desires was unholy. Thought was, hey, I like Apollos, I like Paul, I like Jesus, I like Peter. Division. They had prophecy, word of knowledge, working of miracles, healings, all great things happening in the church. But when it comes to the Lord's table, they're all fighting. Give me some bread. You give me some wine. Paul is writing and saying, you think this? you don't have food in your house? You don't have food in your house? Why are you coming to church and fighting? Small things, but flowing in all the gifts of the Spirit. Very important lesson. 
just because a person can flow in the gifts of the spirit he has a prophecy word of knowledge all of it doesn't mean he's holy he's walking in holiness doesn't mean don't judge or don't uh, you know I'm not getting the right word but sorry yeah don't get carried not carried away but don't measure people yeah that's the word i wanted to get don't measure people by the gifts that they have or the talents that they have never do that that's good but when god sees it is completely different the gifts and talents also are given by god only right so don't measure people hey he's written 10 songs all 10 songs have 10 million views good he's doing something for the body of christ whoever the person is right but doesn't mean he's written 10 songs and those 10 songs the whole world is singing doesn't mean he's living a holy life you get what i'm saying you may be a prophet preaching all across the nation and the nations and everyone know you doesn't mean you're living a holy life so don't measure people by their gifts and talents you can have a person who doesn't have any gifts he's doing the ushering you know sound and setup team of setting the chairs he can live a much more holy life than somebody who's a great evangelist or a great pastor you get what i'm saying right so never look at a person by their gifts and talents gifts and talents are good we need them we need them for the body of christ we need worship leaders we need new songs we need preachers we need pastors we need evangelists we need them but never measure people by that right god looks at holiness are we holy and this holiness it, it, it's not always shown outwardly does is it shown outwardly gifts are shown outwardly like a guitar start singing it's a gift everyone oh very good good job but holiness how do you know who knows you're holy nobody knows you can say i'm holy or you can say i have many holes but holiness is measured on our life on the way that we live our life right and jesus says uh, the bible god says be holy for i am holy do you think god could have said 100 other things couldn't he have said you know oh uh, be powerful be strong yes he said all that but he said be holy because i am holy the moment we begin to walk in holiness we begin to be like god we begin to be like jesus amazing no jesus didn't say you do all the miracles you'll become like me no god didn't say you do all you walk on water you do all these wonderful miracles you'll become like me no god said be holy for i am holy when we walk in holiness when we allow the holy spirit to sanctify us we walk in holiness it, it we begin to reflect like jesus like how god is now suddenly unforgiveness is gone hatred is gone why it's only walking in holiness this is not right for me to get angry at somebody is not right it's not holy right for me to be uh, to have unforgiveness it's not holy so i cannot have it i have to ask for forgiveness you see what holiness does it brings us in line with god right uh, we are being sanctified and we are being perfected every day the fear of the lord is holiness saying god nobody is watching you you have the fear of god you're saying god i need to be holy because you are holy right okay so everyone understood this we are sanctified we're continually being sanctified every day when you have a bath say god or you're washing your face say god i was sanctified i'm continuing to be sanctified every morning the bible says sanctify yourself through the word of god the word of god is like water living water sanctifies washes things inside us there's dirt inside us it'll wash sanctify yourself right 
Okay, let's go to chapter 40. Okay, uh, sanctified by the word and the spirit. Ephesians chapter 5, 25 through 27. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blame, blemish. Now, this from verse 26 onwards, See, verse 25, he's saying, husbands, love your wives, right? Now, that's in the natural. Just as Christ loved the church. Now, the, the, he's taking a husband and wife relationship, and he's putting it to the church and the body of Christ and Jesus, right? Jesus is the bride. We are the bridegroom, right? And he's saying that he might sanctify and cleanse her. The her is the... Uh, bride, right? That is, uh, cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. So when Jesus cleanses us, he cleanses us by the word of God through the Holy Spirit, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not without spot or wrinkle. Okay. Now in the natural, you take a white shirt, all of us have washed a white shirt. Very difficult to keep a white shirt white. You take a white shirt, you put it into that washing machine. What happens? You take it out, you'll have all the other colors on that white shirt. Blue, pink, green, and all it's all mixed. What's happened? All the other other colors have come on that unless you have one of those modern <laughs> washing machines. But I'm sure that's going to be the same case. You take out your white shirt and you look, hey, what is this? You say, oh man, it's become full of spots, full of wrinkles. And then what you do? You get another idea. So let me wash only the white shirts and the white clothes separately. When you wash it, you see that, hey, now no problem. right? So you learn the hard way. I learned the hard way. Right. So here, the Lord Jesus, when he is washing us through the word, through the spirit, he cleanses us completely so that we are without any spot or without any wrinkle. Meaning we are not, uh, when, when we are in heaven, when we be with Jesus, he's presenting ourselves clean, without any spots, no sin. No condemnation, right? Clean. The work, the outworking of God's holiness into our soul and our body takes place through the agency of the Word of God, the work of the Holy Spirit. And as we grow in the community of believers in the temple of God. Okay, everyone say the Word of God. Louder. Word of God. The work of the Holy Spirit. These are the two main ways that God works in our life. Now, I'm saying I'm not saying this is the only way, right? God can work in many other ways, right? But even as He is sanctifying us, two main ways. One is the Word of God, because the Word of God cleanses us. Two is the work of the Holy Spirit. So, we are reading God's word, right? You're going on reading. Suddenly, you know, you're, you're feeling discouraged. Hey, man, God, what can I do in life? Everyone are looking at me. Everyone are saying, you can't do anything. And I, I don't see myself, you know, doing anything big in my life. No, I'm just a mediocre person. You're feeling low. But now you're reading God's word. As you're reading, suddenly you come to Philippians 4.13. What does it say? Oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now what's happened? Nobody has spoken to you. That word has gone deep into your spirit. Hey, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So all that fear, that doubt has been washed away. How? By the word of God. And the same way, every area of our life, the word of God can minister to us. Every area. You can be a businessman. Go to Proverbs. It teaches you how to live, how to work in holiness. What does it say? Even the natural things in life. Imagine a person who's always lazy, right? And he's reading. Okay, what to do today? Let me read. He's reading and he goes to the book of Proverbs and it says, Look at the ants, you sluggard. That means, look at the ants, you lazy person. <laughs> they work and they toil and they work. This person says, Oh man, I should not be a lazy person because the Bible is saying, The ants are not lazy. How can I be lazy? So I should work hard from now. Now, his parents have been telling him for 10 years, nothing has happened. This one verse has changed his life. I should work hard. Suddenly, next day he's going for interview, going applying for jobs. Why? The word of God. That's the power of God's word. Right? So everything, if you notice at APC, one of the things that we focus on is the word of God. Right? When we are preaching on a Sunday morning, we emphasize God's word. Very rarely you'll find personal examples. Only in a teaching setting like this, we give these personal examples and just so that it, the classes, you know, we understand. But on a Sunday morning, when we, when, when we are preaching on church service, it is always the word of God that takes prominence. Right? People will come and say many things of, you know, we testify through God's word. People ask questions. We always back it up with God's word. Right? So that is number one, number one rule for God to cleanse you. Go back to God's word. If you haven't been reading God's word, go back. This is the cleansing process. Very important. Very important. Right now, I know that you know. I, I can say this. There are some of us. How many of us like to read? Tap your hands. You like to read. Sorry. No, just read. You like to read from small. You like to read. None of us. Gertrude says she likes to read. One person. What's your name again? Joseph. Joseph. Joseph likes to read. Right now. I'm not talking, Joseph, I'm not talking about Bible, right? I'm talking about just reading. From small, you like to read. When I was small, I didn't like to read at all. Reading was the last thing I want to do. It was not a gift, nothing. I was, two days before the test, now don't do this, OK? I'm just giving you as an example. I was only uh, maybe in middle class, fourth standard, fifth standard. Two days before the test, open the book, okay, uh, by heart, everything, go, write, pass, that's it. That's what I was, right? But I knew that if I really do prepare well and do well, I knew I could do well. I knew my potential, but I just didn't want to. Why? Football, cycle, yeah? games outside, indoor games, outdoor games, good friends. It's okay. So from small, the habit of reading was not there. Right? So growing up, it was never there. Right? Uh, and when I became a believer, I, I don't mind praying. But I open the Bible, I'll fall asleep. What is this? Oh, Jesus did that. Jesus did this. OK. Suddenly, the story is going everywhere. It's not even a story. Now, it started, OK, then I said, let me go to Old Testament. Old Testament, I couldn't read anything. I didn't understand anything. I said, oh man, what is this? So I didn't read Bible for many, many months after becoming a believer. But prayer I can do. Worship I can do. I came across this verse. The word of God sanctifies your spirit. Then I thought to myself, if I want to become a preacher, I can't go and stand and give stories to people. Every day, one one story, I'll run out of stories. I have to know the word of God, not only for others, but for myself. 
so then i said god i have to read so go back open the book of matthew start reading was it easy no after two pages my head is paining but okay two pages at least then three pages five pages or five chapters uh, you know just go on like that then i began to realize the power of god's word it became interesting for me so what my you know what some of my uh, you know relatives uh, one of my aunt said why don't you read some good books so she would give me some books right all christian books and these are all autobiographies autobiographies means people who uh, you know who who did great things for god god's kingdom and they wrote people have written about their lives right like church history we see all of them here why don't you read books so she started giving me books i became a avid reader wow this is what god did with these people so every week i was reading three books three full books i would read now there's no book it's like which book to read give me a book god changed it right and now without reading it's very difficult for me i have to read something so sometimes i go open google just download a book and i start reading i always read some book right it may not be a physical book i always read something and of course the word of god so we can never give the excuse that i am not a reader if uh, none of us lifted our hands i want you all to get into the habit of reading right those online as well get into the habit of reading and reading god's word you can start small three pages four pages and then eventually you'll see that hey i'm able to you will enjoy it and then you go back to god's word of, oh you will you can spend a day just reading god's word the whole day you can right you can do it because this is the word that will speak to your heart will speak to your spirit it will change your life right testimonies all of that is good but this is what changes your life the word of god this is we make the declaration no this is who god speaking to me sometimes you know people come up to me god is not saying anything did you read go back right read he will speak to you if we don't read how will he speak to me right the second one is the work of the holy spirit as we read the holy spirit begins to work in our life right now we know the holy spirit comes to sanctify he gives us strength holiness then the gifts of the spirit the fruit of the spirit anyone know what is the fruit of the spirit all of them know it okay learn it yeah. this is your homework okay it's all mixed up like noodles <laughs> learn the nine gifts of the spirit and the nine fruit of the spirit right so next class when i come and ask what is the nine gifts of the spirit you should know it whether in hindi english kannada whatever language you should know it right the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit that's your homework yeah okay the word of god is the cleansing agent that washes us that cleanses every filthiness from our lives right as we open our lives to the word of god to the work of the spirit and grow among a community we live out these sanctified lives right so i want to encourage all of us today make a decision right everything starts here when you make a decision you can ask god to help you to fulfill that decision right so morning when you wake up morning may not be a good time to read because you may be sleepy especially in the beginning choose times when you're active you're alert right so evenings are good after your bible college you can sit read right those who are online maybe you're working throughout the day uh in the night before sleeping spend some time just reading it could just be a chapter one chapter and you can maybe write down what you understand from it right and when you get into this habit every day you'll do it i know uh, i always say this right if you look at people who have been very successful in life not only in ministry but in life right they've been very successful 
What is it? You ask them, it's like you do something for 30 days continuously. It becomes a habit. It becomes a lifestyle. Can you tell me some of the habits you have? <laughs> okay. Good sleep. Very good. That's important. Rest. Rest for the mind. Rest for the soul. What else? Oh, what, what are your natural habits? What are the natural habits we have? None walking of us have. Walking. Sorry, Gertrude. Walking. Walking is a natural habit. Yeah. None of us flew and came here. Very good. That's what I said. <laughs> you brush your teeth every day. Every day, it's a natural thing, right? You just get up. You don't say, "Okay, what do I do today morning?" I forgot. No, you remember everything. It is, it is all tuned in in the mind. The procedures, everything is tuned in the mind. It's just done. The same way, the word of God becomes natural when you do something for, you know, if, if you're doing, go back every evening, 7.30 to 8, you're reading the word of God every day, 30 days. From the next month, it'll become a habit. You'll automatically go and you'll read it. Right? So make it a habit. Uh, and I want to encourage you, when you do that, you see your life changing. You see how God will speak to you. Things will change in your life. The way you think, the way you talk, the way you look at situations, the way you look at people, the way you face the enemy, right? face temptations, face rejection, everything will change because you're going back to the Word of God. The Holy Spirit also begins to work. Right? The Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom, what to do, what not to do. Right? Everything is from this. You know, in, in 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 ministry, I have made many mistakes. All of us make mistakes. I made many mistakes. But when I go back, and I and one of the things I always pray is like, God, you've put us into a place of leadership. People come and talk to us, but we need the wisdom, the right word at the right time. Right? How can I give the right word? The word of God is the wisdom of God. I have to give them something. I can I can share natural things, but when I give them the word, there's effect to it. There's power in it. Right? So I want to encourage all of us. Will we do that? Yes? Right? Uh, it's See, these classes, the course is not only about, okay, finish class, go. No, I like to make it in a way that I want to see you all you know, doing growing right there are habits that you may have you may have to let go of and hold on to some new habits right then one of them could be reading and it's good that you know none of you said that you have the habit of reading take it as a as a target or you take it as a decision hey i'm going to go ahead and start reading so we have some publications take the thinnest publication start with that and then go up keep reading different books and you can start with that right you don't even have to spend any money. You don't have to do anything. Take a book, write your name on it. You know it's yours. Start reading it. Right? And then you, the books go thicker, thicker, thicker. Read all the books. What's happening? It's only the word of God. All those books, very, very few examples in any of those books. Very few. Everything is the word of God. So it's great to read that. Right? We'll do that. Right? So have one book at least. Start from this week so that at least even if it's next week, by next week you would have finished one book, then reading becomes a habit. So what are the two ways? We'll close now. Two ways God speaks to us, sanctifies us. Through the word of God, work of the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yes. Word of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. Right? Okay. So we will meet next class and we'll pick up from chapter 41. Living sanctified in Christ. All right. Have a good day. God bless.